So to solve 38a, we are going to square both sides of the equation. When you square a binomial, it means multiply by itself. So I'm going to distribute. And then combine my like terms. And I like to keep the x squared term positive, so I'm going to move the 2x to the right and the 5 to the right. So we get 0 is x squared minus 4. So to solve this, I notice I just have the 1 squared variable, so I'm going to add the 4 back over. Square root both sides, and we get plus or minus 2. Um, I'm actually going to write them separately because one might be extraneous. So let's check our answers. Um, so the square root of, so plugging in positive 2, that's the square root of 9 equals 3. That's right. That's an answer. Let's try negative 2. And that's saying the square root of 1 equals negative 1. That's extraneous. Sally solves it graphically. How does she determine the solution? So for part B, it's where the graphs intersect. The solution is the point where the graphs intersect. Okay, so then for C, um, when we square both sides of the equation, it makes the square root function, which is this one, into, we look up here, I'm going to graph it as a parabola, so that's here, approximately here, and it goes this way. So the extraneous solution is the point down here where they originally did not intersect. All right, for 39, I'm going to simplify each term. So i is still i. i squared is negative 1. i to the third is negative i and i to the fourth is positive one. So these add to zero and these add to zero, so the answer is zero. So now for 40, okay, for a to add, we're just gonna combine our like terms. For c, or for, sorry, for b to subtract, this negative has to go to both parts of that complex number. Now I can combine my like terms. Now we're going to multiply. And we have to simplify. So i squared is negative 1, so this becomes positive 18. We can combine those two together. So we get 30 plus 19i. Well, for d, I notice these, um, that these complex numbers are actually complex conjugates because the sign in the middle is different, but everything else is the same. So I know when I multiply them together, I should get a real number answer. So let's make sure. So i squared is po negative 1, so that becomes positive 9. These add to 0, so 16 plus 9 is 25. For e, when it's some, a complex number squared, it means multiply by itself. Yeah. 
I squared is negative 1. So 49 minus 25 and 35 plus 35. Okay, so for 41a, explain why a plus bi squared can never be a real number. So if we multiply those together, a times a, a times bi, a times bi, and then b squared i squared. So this becomes negative b squared so when I multiply together I'm always going to have this imaginary component so therefore it is never a real number okay why is b i to the fourth always a real number so um, that means we get b to the fourth, i to the fourth, and i to the fourth is one, so our answer is always then just b to the fourth, and since b is real, that whole uh, term is real. Okay, so for 42, if x equals negative four, then that means that x plus four is a factor. The x-intercept is negative four, zero. It says a point, so that's why I had to write it as a coordinate. The second solution is always, sometimes, or never real. That's always. And negative 4 is a 0. It's also called a root. Okay, similarly for 43. Um, so the factor is going to be x minus 5 minus 7i. The point is an x-intercept. Well, if the solution is imaginary, there is no x-intercept. Um, the second solution is never going to be real. The second solution is the conjugate, the complex conjugate. So that means 5 minus 7i and 5 plus 7i are the zeros. Okay, so two real roots means two x-intercepts. I'll pick one here at negative 3 and one here at 3. One double root means an x-intercept as the vertex. go. And two imaginary roots means no x-intercepts. So there's some examples. Okay, solve. So for a, I'm going to square root both sides and then add the 3. Uh, same thing for b. And then subtract the 4. When you square root both sides of an equation, don't forget your plus or minus. Um, for C, I can check to see if it factors. Is anything going to multiply to 30 that adds to 8? It's not. So I'm going to complete the square since this number is even. So half of 16 squared, I'm going to add to both sides. So I'll factor the left. Now I can square root both sides. And then subtract the 4. When you complete the square to factor this trinomial down to the binomial squared, if you take half of your middle term, that's always going to be here in your factor. Okay, for D, I'm going to add the 17. I'll 
Let's see, maybe it's going to factor. 3 times 10 is 30. Does anything multiply to 30 that adds to negative 6? Nope. Um, so because... Um, a is not 1, and, well, I could complete the square if I divided everything by 3. I think I'll have a fraction here, so let's use quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So our answer is 6 plus or minus i root 84 over 6. Now for e, we have to multiply everything together first. Remember, 2x plus 1 squared means 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. I'm going to move everything to the right. Um, it's not going to factor. 3 times 3 is 9. Nothing multiplies to 9 that adds to 5. So let's use quadratic formula. Simplify. And we get our final two answers.